Channing Tatum is back as Magic Mike, and he does a fantastic job in this film. He doesn't miss a So beat. here's the basic premise. So uh, Channing Tatum has uh, fallen on some rough times during the pandemic. He uh, lost his furniture business and is basically bankrupt. And so to make ends meet, he's been bartending uh, for this caterer in the Miami area and happens to be at the same event where Salma Hayek's character is hosting. Um, she's going through a divorce from this billionaire in London. And so she heads back to Miami to show face because there's talk around town uh, that she's going bankrupt. So she shows face, a brave face, and throws hosts this party full of people that don't even like her, her divorce but, attorney who tells her about this magical dance she had with Magic Mike uh, at her bridal shower. And she tells Salma, we have him dance for you. It'll rejuvenate you, get you, you know, your spunk back. And so she does. She offers him, you know, $6,000 to dance for her. And he gives her a sultry dance. That's what I love about director Soderbergh like the Ocean's Eleven, the Ocean's franchise, he really gets into the action. So he wastes no time. No time is spared. That dance that's in the trailer is one of the first scenes. He reorganizes her Miami, her, her Miami mansion so that he can use uh, the objects and the structure in this living space to give her the dance of a lifetime. And so at the end of this goes on for a good five minutes. And when I tell you the choreography in this movie is on point, it is so good. Selma Hayek is a great addition to this series. She plays Maxandra, who is this firebrand, really sultry and fiery, and is married to this billionaire in London. Um, they're going through a messy divorce. Uh, but she does find some spark in uh, Magic Mike after this dance. And so she offers him $60,000 to spend a month with her in London to, in a very <laughs> pretty woman type art, to spend a month with her in London to revitalize this review of this historic landmark that her husband owns. He will direct this review and uh, she will produce it and pay for it. And so he stays in her flat, gets to know her uh, future ex-husband and her adopted daughter. And they go on this search to find the men who will be in this review. And they seemingly use the same dancers from Soderbergh's Finding Magic Mike, his uh, reality show from a few years ago. Um, but anyway, so there's not a lot of stripping in this film, which I thought was great. It's more of a burlesque show. I think it's very entertaining. There are some low, not low, there are some weaker points with the story in the second half. But I think the third act makes up for it tremendously with the beautiful dance and the show that they put on. Uh, it's very woman-centered. So the show, at that final show, is very, very enticing. I saw this film in Dolby. So the surround sound, the, the, the sound was very immersive and I suggest if you're going to see this in a theater that you see it in Dolby and, IMA and or IMAX because that sound made it feel like you were actually there. The applause and you know the shouting and the, the, the cheering and the crowd felt like you were in that, uh, that playhouse with the characters. I think this is a good ending to the series and if you haven't, I think, cause I've seen them all. The first one was great. The second one wasn't as great. And this one is a good, it, this is a good final chapter. Uh, this is more of a pretty woman type vibe uh, with reverse roles, which is pretty cool. Anyway, the choreography is really good. 
uh, the choreographer from The Lost City with Channing Taylor, Allison Falk, who who choreographed, she was uh, assistant choreographer on one of Madonna's tours. She also choreographed The Lost City, which also had Channing Tatum um, and Magic Mike. So she is back. I think the choreography that uh, Channing Tatum had, especially in one of the first scenes and the final scene with the ballerina was point. I mean, it was really, really and great. The women were like going crazy every time, especially there's this, uh, there's this one scene where, a couple of scenes, but there's this one in particular where it's just, there's this dead pan of Channing Tatum, and I mean, they went wild, because he's so beautiful. Uh, but they just went wild when the it was just a dead pan, him in that camera. Oh my gosh, they were so crazy. Um, it was really fun. It, I think this is a good film to see in the theater. It's not raunchy. The, there's this one uh, arc where uh, Salma's character's adoptive daughter is writing, adopted daughter is writing a short story. And so she's narrating the art and seduction and really spirituality of dance and dancing and the uh, how in, uninhibited it is when you're dancing with a partner because she's a teenager and so young it seems like it wasn't necessarily written for her this should have been his dialogue because he should i think it would have been a natural progression for him to write a book about his life as a dancer rather than giving this dialogue to a teen but she otherwise wouldn't have had much to do but to give this to a teen because some of the some of the wording and it just seemed like she would she would know everything that she's saying this is something that mike will have known firsthand so that dialogue and arc should have likely been given to him and it would have worked well uh there was this other scene that was really reminiscent of pretty woman where magic mike meets maxandra's friends snooty you know highfalutin wealthy friends and magic mike you know is himself and he really charms them in his own way and wins them over and i thought that was really cute it was an unnecessary scene but it was cute nonetheless i think uh channing tatum still has it those choreographed scenes are choreographed to a t he is so great. St he still has it. He did a really great job uh, with the choreography. Now, I will say, I would like him. I know he has, you know, a couple of projects where coming up where he's still like in this sort of comedic bag. And I just want to see him do. I liked him in Dog, and I want him to go even deeper than that where he goes into this dramatic space because he's been dancing and gyrating his whole career, it seems like. And I just like him to, because he is a good actor, I'd like him to get more serious. I would. I'd like him to go after the Brad Pitt role since Brad Pitt is going to be retiring soon. I want him to get into that bag where he could still have fun, but he can show his fans that he really does know how to dig deep and uh, do some drama. I'd like to see that. But you know, these next three, <laughs> these next three projects that he has going on, we won't get it. But it'd also be nice to see him in another franchise. Like he should have joined the Fast and Furious franchise, I think but also maybe get into um, some DC or Marvel uh, where he can have fun, but also do some indie drama. That's just me. All in all, uh, Magic Mike is 100% worth seeing in the theater. And I think it's a good time. I think it's a good time. At any rate, uh, Magic Mike will be released wide this weekend. Definitely, definitely see it in the theater.